Thanks very much, Keith. Um, moving on to Layla, Layla Skins. Morning, Layla. Morning, I'm really um, happy everyone admiring your cat picture behind you. It's very, it's very fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi everyone, I'm Layla Skins. I'm a reader in the School of Law at the University of Sheffield. So I've spent about the last 15 years now um, researching inside police custody. So over the years I've done a huge number of different studies looking at um, suspects, due process rights and type entitlements in this country and other jurisdictions. I've looked at the overnight detention of children in police cells. Um, most recently I've been engaged in the Good Police Custody Study which has been all about trying to sort of unravel and pick what we mean by good police custody, good for whom, um, and this has kind of led to a series of um, attempts by myself to influence police custody policies and practices. So um, in terms of vulnerability in police custody we know that detainees are disproportionately vulnerable. Um, they're more likely to have mental health conditions, physical health conditions, experience intoxication, addictions, learning disabilities um, than the general population. And there've been various different ways in which vulnerability has been defined, um, most notably within PACE, where the focus tends to be on mental health conditions and mental disorders. And Roxana's work has been brilliant for shining a light on these definitions of vulnerability in PACE in theory and practice. Um, but there's been other ways in which vulnerability has also been defined. So I sat on an expert reference group for an HMIC um, a thematic inspection on vulnerability in police custody in 2015. And they tended to focus on protected characteristics as a way of um, defining vulnerability. So things like mental health problems, um, learning disabilities, young age, race, ethnicity, etc. Um, at the time, I was really disappointed, though, that they didn't include women within this definition. So um, we know from research on prisons that women are likely to have a very different set of experiences um, connected to their kind of physical, mental wellbeing, caring responsibilities, perhaps they're experiencing um, custody for the first time, they're more likely to be victims of abuse um, and domestic um, violence as well. So I'm basically poised at the moment um, to uh, just about to submit a grant application with Roxana as one of my kind of collaborators, also collaborators at Warwick, which is going to be exam examining the gendered and racialized nature of women's lived experiences of police custody. And this has never been explicitly looked at in my own research included. Um, and part of the research is going to be trying to situate these lived experiences through the kind of frame and lens of vulnerability and exploring whether or not this is a relevant concept or perhaps we need to kind of look at alternatives as well. So in particular kind of concepts of, of dignity. That's me. 